Alrighty guys, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Facebook's Blender bot. This is a deep learning powered model that's actually been trained to be able to interact and respond like a conversational agent. This has a whole bunch of different types of use cases. Say for example, you wanted to build a chatbot or a virtual agent or even an assistive agent. This might be the deep learning model for you. Let's take a deeper look as to what we'll be going through. So in this video, we're going to be focused on leveraging Facebook's Blenderbot model through Hugging Face Transformers. This is an open source library available through Python that actually allows you to leverage some of the most state of the art natural language processing models, which are based on transformer architecture. Now, specifically in this tutorial, we're going to be focused on installing our dependencies. These are going to be PyTorch and the Transformers library. Then we'll actually load up and download the BlenderBot model. So we can download this from the Hugging Face model repository, and then we'll build up our input. So we'll pass through a sentence, we'll convert that to tokens, and we'll actually be able to generate a conversation with the BlenderBot model. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so we've got a bit of a quick one today. So we're gonna be taking a look at Facebook's BlenderBot model. Now, in order to leverage this, we're going to be accessing it through Hugging Face Transformers, which is probably one of my favorite natural language processing libraries. And you can see here that this is the documentation. Now, there are a bunch of different models that are available. So there's one with a 90 million parameter model, one with a 2.7 billion parameter model, and also one with a 9.4 billion parameter model. There is also one with a 400 million parameter model, which is going to be the one that we're using. So I believe it fits in between this one and this one. But enough on that, that basically just describes all the different types of models that you've got available. Now, in order to power this, we're going to be using PyTorch. So we're going to be installing that. But specifically, what we've actually got to do to get this up and running is go through these key three steps. So first up, what we're going to do is install our dependencies from over here. And this is really going to be PyTorch and Transformers. Then we're going to download and import our model. Now, the cool thing about Hugging Face Transformers is that it will download and manage the dependency for you. And if you've pre-downloaded it, it's going to be cached. So you don't need to do it again. Then last but not least, we're going to speak to it. So we'll actually pass through some natural language, convert it to tokens as you typically do with natural language processing. And then we'll actually be able to get responses back from the bot. So it's pretty, pretty cool. The cool thing about this is that you could extend it a little bit further. If you wanted to integrate it into um, a UI or build it into a Kiwi app or a Streamlit app, these would be great tutorials or great examples of apps you can build. All right, enough of me blabbing. Let's install our dependency. So the first one that we're going to do is going to be PyTorch. Now I've shown this a few times, so we're going to go through it reasonably quickly. But if you go to PyTorch.org and hit install, what you've got is basically a guided workflow that tells you how to install this stuff. So we are going to choose the stable version. We're going to choose Windows for our package installer. We're going to use pip. We are going to choose Python because it's going to be a Python tutorial. And we're going to choose CUDA 11.1 because that's what I've got installed. And then all we need to do is copy this command and paste it into our notebook. And I'm just going to delete the three and run that. So this is going to go on ahead and install PyTorch. And you can see I've already got it installed. So it's gone very, very quickly. If you're doing it for the first time, it is going to take a little bit longer. Uh, but really, all that we needed to do there was pass through exclamation mark and then copy the command that we're getting from PyTorch into our Jupyter Notebook. And that's going to go on ahead and install it. Now, the next thing that we need to do is just go on ahead and install Transformers. So this is through Hugging Face Transformers. So if we go and take a look, Hugging Face Transformers... Um, so I'll include all of this documentation in the description below as well. So you can get that. So again, pip install transform is pretty easy to get up and running with that. So let's go on ahead and do that. Alrighty, that's our second install done. So all I've written there is exclamation mark pip install transformers and those are our dependencies now installed the cool thing about transformers is that it will actually handle the download of the blender bot model for us so we don't need to do anything fancy to actually download that it's going to handle it for us so let's go on ahead and do this now so that is step one now done so all of our dependencies are now installed now what we can do is import our model let's add a couple of uh cells so we that makes it a little bit easier all righty so what we're going to do now is we're going to import the model class and the tokenizer. So think about it as your tokenizer, as you're almost like your machine learning translator. So it's going to take natural language and convert it to token. So it's just a binary or a numeric representation of words. So um, you might say the word Nick that might have an identifier of 124 or 
um, like a specific unique identifier. That is what your tokenizer is doing, is converting natural text to a number so that we can pass that identifier to our machine learning model. So we're going to import both of those classes now. Let's do it. Okay, so those are our two classes now imported. So I've written one line there. So I've written from transformers import blender bot tokenizer, comma blender bot for conditional generation. So the blender bot tokenizer is going to be, or this class here is actually going to be our tokenizer class. So that's going to be what holds our tokenizer. This is going to be our model class. So this is going to be what holds the actual model. And what we'll do is we'll grab some natural text. We'll tokenize it, pass it through to our model, and then we'll decode it. So convert it from tokens that we get from our model and convert it back to text. So again, enough of me talking, let's actually do it. So the next thing that we need to do is a download and set up the model and tokenizer. So let's do that. Okay, we've got a bit of an error there. Uh, what have we typed wrong? This M should be in caps. Okay, so that is our tokenizer and our model, well, loading at the moment. So it will load. It normally takes a little while for this to, to load because keep in mind, it is quite a large model. I think it was around about 600 to 700 to 800 megs. I can't remember now, but it, it was reasonably large. So that is our tokenizer and our model now loaded so that's the hard stuff done so i've written two lines of code there and one comment so basically what these two lines are doing are actually loading up our tokenizer and our model so our tokenizer is or the tokenizer line that we've written is tokenizer equals blender bot tokenizer so what we imported from up here dot from pre-trained so this is the what's effectively going to load our pre-trained model so you don't need to do any hardcore training with this it's just going to do it for you and then to that, I've passed through this string here. So it says Facebook forward slash BlenderBot dash 400 and then M in caps dash distill. So this is really, really important. So you would have seen that I had an error as I was loading this. This is because I had the M as a lowercase, in which case it is going to throw an error because the file path for that specific model isn't correct. So in this case, it's got to be a capital M. Cool. So that is our tokenizer. So once again, tokenizer equals blender bot tokenizer and blender bot or blender bot is in caps and tokenizer is in caps or in camel case dot from pre-trained. And then we're going to pass through a positional argument, which is a string. It's going to be Facebook forward slash blender bot dash 400 M dash distill. And then we've pretty much done something very similar to load up our models. So I've written model equals blender bot for conditional generation. So this class that we loaded up from up here dot from pre-trained, and then we're grabbing this exact same string and we're passing that through to our from pre-trained method for our specific model. So that is our tokenizer and our model now downloaded. That is step two now done. So again, I'm said this is going to be a relatively straightforward tutorial. Cool. Now what we need to do is we need to actually go on ahead and start speaking to our model. So the, we are now up to step three, where we're actually going to be able to work with our chatbot. So let's go on ahead and do this. So first thing that we need to do is create some input text or an utterance. So whenever you're working with chatbots or chatbots, the way they typically refer to input text is an utterance. So it's basically what somebody said. So we're going to create an utterance and we're going to set that equal to um, my name is Nick. I like coding, right? And this could be just about anything. This is how you want to chat with your chatbot. Then what we need to do is tokenize that. So we're going to tokenize it, the utterance. And let me just quickly uh, recap. So again, this one's pretty straightforward, but I've created a new variable called utterance and I've set that equal to my name is Nick. I like coding. So it's just a string. Now we're going to tokenize this. So let's do it. Okay, and that is our utterance now tokenized. So I've written inputs equals tokenizer. And then this is using our tokenizer from up here. And then we've passed through one positional argument and one keyword argument. So the first thing that we've passed through is this utterance over here. And the second argument is return underscore tensors. And we've set that equal to PT, which means we're going to return PyTorch tensors, which gives us this output over here. So we get two, we basically get a dictionary back. 
and that is consists or that consists of our input IDs, which is this over here, and our attention mask, which are the two arguments or the two values that we need to pass through to our model to actually generate a response. Because remember, what's actually happening is we're generating or passing through an input, and our conditional Blender bot model is generating a response. So it's actually generating a sequence of strings. So what we can now do is pass this utterance or this input into our model. Now, remember how I said that we're, our tokenizer converts our natural text into a series of tokens or IDs. This is that representation right there. So 863 represents my, oh, sorry, 863 represents my, 1,356 represents name, 315 is Nick, blah, 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 so on. So basically this set of IDs is trying to replicate what we've got over here in a format that our Blender bot model is going to understand. So now what we can do is we can actually pass this to our Blender bot model. So let's do it. Cool. So that is our return from our Blender bot model. And again, at the moment, at the, it's nothing too crazy. We've just got this sequence of identifiers as a tensor from, uh, from our specific Blender bot model. But what we can actually do is decode this to be able to see what our Blender bot model is saying. Now, before we do that, let's take a look at what we wrote there. So I've written res or results equals model dot generate. And then we're unpacking our inputs, which we had from over here. And we're passing that through to our model dot generate function or model dot generate method. So the full line is res equals model dot generate and then asterisk asterisk input. So this is unpacking that. And then I've just output that below. So we've got this return results value down here. Now, at the moment, this doesn't really mean much to us. What we need to do is decode this using our tokenizer again to see what it actually means. So let's do that. And there you go. That is the response that we've got back from our Blender bot model. So we remember we passed through, my name is Nick, I like coding. And the response that we're getting is, nice to meet you, Nick. What kind of coding do you like to do? How cool is that? So it's actually responding back. It's taking in our input, it's processing it, and it's going and replying back to us with uh, uh, this output that you can see here. So it's actually uttering back what we want to hear. Now, in order to decode the output that we had from our model, let's actually add some comments. So this is pass through the utterances to the blender bot model and then down here what we're doing is we are decoding the model output okay so what we've written to decode is we've written tokenizer dot decode and then we'll pass through res and then we've grabbed our first result from over here you'll note that when we get our result back we've actually got it stacked inside of a, a two square brackets. That means it's inside of another set of an arrays. So what we need to do is extract that. So we've only got it inside of a single set of square brackets so that we can pass it to our decode function. This would mean as well that we can actually take our inputs and decode those in a similar manner. So let's just quickly, or let me quickly show you that. So if I write tokenizer.decode and I took our inputs and remember this is a dictionary. So I'd have to type input IDs and then I'd have to grab the first value. So there you go. So that is us taking this inputs from over here and we're actually decoding it. Let me bring that down because you don't, this is purely optional. I just wanted to show you how to do it. So this is decoding the inputs. So we've passed through, my name is Nick, I like coding, and then the end of sentence. And then our tokenizer or our model is returned, nice to meet you, Nick, what kind of coding do you like to do? How cool is that? So this is the Blender bot model actually working in real time. I'm just going to delete that over there. Cool. So really all we did is we passed through our utterance, we tokenized it. And remember our tokenizer is converting our string, which is this over here to a set of unique identifiers, which you can see there. Then our model is taking those inputs and our tokenizer is then, and our model is taking those inputs and outputting a sequence back. And then our tokenizer is decoding that to be able to get this. So you can see, nice to meet you, Nick. What kind of coding do you like to do? Now we could pass through a bunch of stuff. Um, so let's try something else now. So um, I like to code in Python. However, I don't mind JavaScript. So we're gonna run this cell again. So keep going through our pipeline and let's see what Blender bot comes back with now. Oh, take a look at this. So that's cool. I'm not a big fan of Java. We've said JavaScript and it's come back Java. Not the same, but I know it's used in a lot of different applications. Uh, let's try asking something else. 
what have you coded in Java? Java, all right, so this one's clearly lost context. So Java is one of the most widely used languages in the world. It is used in a lot of different applications. Not all that relevant there. Um, let's try something else. I love eating cake. So it's gone and replied. So what kind of cake is your favorite? I love chocolate cake with vanilla frosting. So I wonder if we need to concatenate these. It'd be interesting to see if we, this maintains state. Um, so I like chocolate cake. Chocolate cake is one of my favorite desserts. What is your favorite kind? This implies to me that it's not maintaining context. So I wonder if we need to do a little bit of tweaking there. But in a nutshell, you can at least see that it is actually responding back to us. So I could say, um, let's do something controversial. Uh, piss off. Blender bot, you suck. Let's see how it responds back to like negative input. Why do you say that? I'm not sure. I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way. Wait, hold on. So they're not the only one that feels that way about Blender bot sucking? I don't know. All right. Um, what else can we say? I want to order a pizza. This is me just messing around now, guys. Tutorial is effectively over, but you can at least see what Blender bot is responding with. I love pizza. What type of toppings do you like? I, I like vegetables, meats, and condiments. I said I wanted to order a pizza, Blender bot. Anyway, whatever. In a nutshell, that is BlenderBot wrapped up, really. So what we've gone done and done is we've installed our dependencies. We then went and imported our model and we then went and spoke to it. So we were able to pass through an utterance, tokenize that into a series of identifiers, then generate our output and then decode it. So again, if you wanted to go and run through multiple utterances, you all you need to do is change the utterance up here and pass it through. Now, I wonder if anyone in the comments knows whether or not you need to be passing through state, do hit me up. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But on that note, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell. If you've got any questions, comments or queries, by all means, do hit me up in the comments below. I'll be happy to help. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.